This video explains how to add and maintain vehicles in the TMS system. To find your list of trucks, first click on the Assets tab and then choose Vehicles from the Assets menu. When you first set up your system, you should make sure you have template records defined properly. To find your template records, click on the Templates toggle in the top of the screen. This will list all the template records that are defined for your company. Click on the Template ID to open the template record. The purpose of a template record is to preset information about a vehicle so when you create a new vehicle from this template, that new vehicle will get these settings. The data copy to the new vehicle record can either be a drop-down flag setting like box trucks, yes, no, the payload and dimensional data, or compliance rules that must apply to every vehicle of this class. Currently, this template only has vehicle license plate as the compliance rule. Let's say we wanted to add another compliance rule like emission testing. We choose the emission testing from the drop-down and then just leave everything blank and save the record. Now we have emission testing as another compliance rule that will be set when we create a new vehicle record from this template. To add a new vehicle, at the top right of the screen is a green button that says Add New Vehicle. In the drop-down, you can either copy the data from one of your template records or copy one of your existing trucks. Just highlight the truck and then say Copy Selected. It will copy certain information from the record you select into your new vehicle record. For this demo, I'm going to create a new vehicle from our cargo van template. The system will automatically pre-fill a lot of the defaults that I need for my cargo van, which will save me time by not having to enter this information. The information I need to enter will be the vehicle ID, the vehicle type, which will be copied, how many trailers associated with this particular vehicle. It's a cargo van, so I will set this to zero. Box truck is very important. A box truck is any vehicle that has the cargo compartment attached to the vehicle. A tractor trailer would have a trailer, so this would be set no for a tractor trailer. For a cargo van, it's set to yes. The domicile country where the vehicle resides and whether it can cross the border. All the payload and dimensional data of the vehicle, and then other options operational data like dock high, lift gate, hazmat, etc., and any telematics information. A lot of this will be copied directly from the template record, but I can change any information I want in this particular screen. For example, this vehicle may only carry 1,900 pounds. If I was creating a vehicle like a tractor trailer that did not have the box attached to the vehicle permanently, I would say box truck no. The box dimensional data disappears. That will be defined when we hook a trailer to the vehicle later on. The left side of the vehicle profile is a about the operational information about the truck. The right side is non-operational data. If you have more than one business unit in your company, you can assign the vehicle to a business unit. If you have more than one physical location, you may have multiple depots. You can assign the truck to a depot. The vehicle owned by lists the different ways you can own the vehicle. The always post this asset is a very important setting. When you say yes, this means that you will share this vehicle with other companies in the network. If you say no, it will never be shared with other people in the network. This is the only place where you can set this as yes or no. Remember, if it's set to yes, then you will be allowed to post this truck as available to other people in the network. You can store and check the VIN number of any vehicle. Please look at the video about how to manage and store VIN numbers. The remaining of the right side is all about the vehicle, the make, the model, the color, etc. It's up to you whether you want to use this information. Finally, there's a recruiting area where you would identify the date the vehicle was recruited and who recruited the vehicle. Once you have the information in the system, you can either save the vehicle as out of service or in service. Out of service means it cannot be dispatched until it's brought into service. In service means the vehicle is ready for use and can be dispatched. Once I save the record, I can now drill back into the profile to update the record. The vehicle record is divided into these sections. The basic information about the vehicle is at the top. Operational data follows. Then there's a section on all the payload and dimensional information. Then there's other operational data like dock high, lift gate, etc. Telematic information, any kind of segmentation we do for the vehicles. On the top Top right will be vehicle utilization summary, then the compliance data. Below that will be the non-operational specific data. At the top of the screen, there's other sections of the vehicle information, like their service history, position history, compliance, notes, settings, and logs. The vehicle type is a drop-down. For more information on vehicle types, see the video setting your truck types. The dispatch note is an area where you can save information that would be important to share with other dispatch. You can also identify how many trailers can be hooked to this particular vehicle. The limit is 10.
You can modify and change any setting on the left hand side by just changing the setting and clicking the green checkbox. The vehicle utilization area is a quick summary of what's going on with this particular vehicle. When did it last become available? When did it last have a paying load? What's the last known location of the vehicle and date and time? Where is it available to work and whether it's locked or not? Its current service status, whether it's in or out of service, and whether the vehicle is reserved. For more information about any of these settings, see the appropriate training video. Video. When a vehicle is first created from either the template record or copying from another donor truck record, it will automatically copy the compliance summaries but show that all the compliance data has already expired. To fix this, right click on the row, click edit, and update the data to the appropriate dates and times and all the other pieces of information that needs to apply for this particular compliance rule. In this case, I put the license number, the state, and country of the license. To the right of the rule will identify the compliance name, in this case, vehicle license plate. It applies to vehicle for every country in every state or province. It is not shared in the network, and on dispatch, we will ignore if this is out of compliance. The options are ignore, warn, which would warn a dispatcher, or prevent, which would prevent the dispatcher from dispatching this particular truck. We can also upload files associated with this compliance record. Click Select Files. From your folder, pick the document that you would like to upload, open it, and the system will upload it and save it with this particular compliance record. Then you will be able to retrieve and review all the documents associated with this compliance. When you save the compliance data, it is now reflected in the profile for this particular truck. To get more details about compliances or modify or enhance the compliance data that you already have, go to the Compliance section at the top of the screen. This will open up the Compliance Grid where you can add different compliances, insurances, etc. for this vehicle. The top menu system gives you more information about this vehicle. Service history will be a history of all the times the truck was taken in and out of service. Position history will show all the historical position locations of the trucks. From here you can add new check calls. Appliances we looked at already, and this is where you can add or modify existing compliance records for the truck. Notes allows you to keep unlimited number of notes about the truck, and the logs will show you all the changes that were done, who did the change, a description of what the change was, and the old and new values for everything that was changed in this particular truck record. To deactivate a truck, go to the blue Actions drop-down and click Deactivate. The truck will now be deactivated. To reactivate an inactive truck, go to the Actions drop-down and click Reactivate, and the vehicle is reactivated. You will still need to put the truck back into service after you reactivate it. It will not be reactivated as in service. Thank you for watching this video on how to add and maintain vehicle information.